Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Greck, and on today's episode, I'm gonna get into all the details of the drinking water system that I'm going to design and then install in my Jeep Gladiator. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, without drinking water, there is no expedition. It doesn't matter how much fuel you're carrying, it doesn't matter what capacity your fridge is, when you run out of drinking water, it's time to go back to civilization. So for me, a really good quality drinking water system that makes it quick and convenient to use, obviously being safe to drink out of, and takes nasties out of the water, those are all essential for me on my trips. So today, this is going to be very design heavy. I'll walk you through the whole thought process of how I've designed what I'm doing. This is part one, and part two will come next video where we'll actually get to work and install this thing and see how well my design holds up to actually installing it. So if you're thinking about a drinking water and filtration setup for your Overland vehicle, stick around, tons of details coming right now. When I designed and built the drinking water system for my Africa Jeep, back in the day, I actually blogged about how I did that. So I'll throw a link in the description. You can read through and see step-by-step -step photos of what it looked like. More recently, I filmed a video about the whole design and then I filmed using it, getting water into the tank and getting water out of the tank. So if you check out both of those resources, that'll give you a really good understanding of what I did for my Africa JK and how I'm approaching what I wanna do for the Gladiator. And I've just been out for another five day trip and my organization's getting better but one of the things that was a real pain point was the water jug. And I just have like a four gallon jug kind of kicking around in the bed of the Gladiator. And I have to lean over to get it, get it out. And it takes a long time to fill up individual water bottles or a pot to cook some food. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized there are a lot of things that I would give up if you told me I had to give up something in order to have my good drinking water set up. Drinking water is something that I just use so many times every day. I really want it to be quick and efficient and I don't wanna to have to invest time and energy every time. I just wanna get some water for a drink, to make a coffee or to cook dinner. So for me, I honestly, I'd be happy to drive around in a vehicle that didn't even have four wheel drive if it had a good drinking water setup. That's how far I would go to say, this is one of the most essential systems on my vehicle. When it comes to designing your own setup, the first thing, really ground zero, is you have to think about where are you going to mount a water tank. And this will obviously vary greatly based on what vehicle you have and how you're designing it. Whether you've got interior living space or whether you're living outside under an awning or something. So the placement of the water tank will determine is it in the way if you wanna be sitting inside or whatever. Also remember, if you're going to cold places, Think about if the tank will freeze. For me here in Australia, not a concern at all, but obviously if I was going to Northern Europe in the winter or back up to the Yukon in the winter, that's something I would seriously consider. I'd have the tank inside the vehicle, I would insulate it, and I would even look at heating it or having a heater inside the cabin to make sure that it doesn't freeze. But for me on this trip, that's not a consideration. So one of the reasons I really like the Jeep Gladiator is because it is just physically bigger than my Wrangler, which means more room for water tanks, more room for fuel tanks. So that's exciting. There's a few different ways I could go about this. And the first and most obvious spot to put a water tank is underneath, kind of on the opposite side of the stock gas tank. That would be between the exhaust and the drive shaft. And it's actually exactly where I mounted the water tank on my Africa Jeep and that worked fantastically well. I think it's a brilliant option, but I ruled it out really quickly on this build because for me, I'm going to put an additional fuel tank in that exact spot. And so for me, having the fuel down low, having it just simple, I don't have to mess with jerry cans or anything like that. There are a million reasons why having a fuel tank down there is a great idea. Therefore, no water tank on the Gladiator down there for me. The next spot I looked at was removing the spare tire, maybe putting it in the bed or somewhere else, and then mounting a tank where the spare tire usually sits. And we all know the Gladiator can accommodate a 37 inch spare tire. So you get an enormous amount of room there if you're going to mount a tank. 
and I did a lot of research into this, there actually aren't any company that make a drinking water tank that is designed to go in the place of a spare tire like that up under the bed. There are a couple of companies, Titan Fuel Tanks for example, they make replacement diesel tanks that go in that spot and they're huge, they're up to like 50 gallons, which is an enormous amount of liquid, but they don't make one out of food grade plastic. And as far as I could tell, nobody really does. I could have had one custom made, I could attempt to make my own, but that sounds like an enormous amount of work that I don't really wanna go down that rabbit hole if I can help it. Another reason I don't love mounting it there, while the weight is very low, it's even under the bed of the Gladiator, my problem with it is that it's actually behind the rear axle. And talking to friends who are very connected to the Jeep engineers who designed the Gladiator, they're really adamant that you don't want weight behind the rear axle. It really negatively impacts the driving experience and its off-road capabilities when there's a lot of weight behind the rear axle. So for me, I'm trying really hard to keep everything forward. And putting a huge water tank back there, that would be a ton of weight way behind the axle. So again, I kind of ruled out that spot early on and I said, let's find something better. Next option is inside the cab itself. I mentioned in my last video, Front Runner make this great tank that goes kind of in the rear footwell where the rear passenger feet would normally go. And it has a hump in it to clear the transmission tunnel. And I think that's a really great option. If I was having interior living space or if I had some sort of flat sleeping platform in an SUV type vehicle, I think that would be the tank for me. But here in the Gladiator, I'm keeping one of the rear seats because I do want my family to come along on this trip. I wanna be able to carry more people. And I think it would be a real negative to ruin their rear foot space like that. Sitting in that seat with your feet up, with your knees right up near your chin, I don't think that's gonna be very comfortable for those massive desert crossings where you're in the car for a long time every day. So again, I ruled that one out. Next really good option for pickup trucks is a tank that sits at the very back of the bed and it has cutouts on each side for the wheel wells so that it can sit flush to the back and it's actually not very deep. It doesn't take up a lot of space in the bed. Again, really great option for pickup trucks. I like this option. The weight is very much in the center of the vehicle, front to rear, it's centered left to right. Those are all pluses. For me though, I can't do that because the kitchen that I'm coming is the entire length of the Gladiator bed. I mean to the nearest half an inch, which means there isn't even going to be half an inch space back there for a water tank. So again, I ruled that option out, which you can see my list is actually getting quite short. And this is how you have to think about it. You have to slowly narrow down what are the options that even work or that fit your scenario. And so finally, I came up with the idea of mounting the tank on top of the wheel well in the bed. And that's where this tank comes in. So you can see it's got a cutout for the wheel well, which actually I think is really smart because that space on top of the wheel well in the bed, it's kind of awkward to use anyway. If I mount a water tank there, it's space that I probably wouldn't have used anyway. The weight is up a little higher than I would prefer, but most of it is quite forward. So I think it's kind of a compromise all around. And this tank, this is food grade plastic, which is essential for your drinking water system. You cannot consider a tank that isn't food grade safe. And this is a generic one made by an Australian company, but I have it on really good authority that an American company is working on a tank that will do exactly the same function. In fact, it's even bigger than this one. The one I've got here is 43 liters. I'll put the gallons on the screen after I do the conversion. And the American company that I know of working on one, it's going to be more like 15 gallons, or I think that's 57 liters. So significantly bigger, and I think it would fit better than this one does being generic. But this is what I've got to work with, shipping being what it is during COVID times. So this is the one that I'm going to install. Obviously your tank selection and where you choose to mount it really is fundamental to your whole system. So spend the time, do the research and find out what's going to work for your needs. The next thing you need to think about is filtration for your setup, whether you're going to run a filter or you're not. And this kind of influences some other decisions down the road. Because if you run a filter, you're probably gonna to have to run a pump to get water out of the tank because you need to force the water through the filter. And if I was staying in fully developed countries, 
I probably wouldn't bother with a filter. But here in Australia, yeah, it's kind of, you know, cities have really great tap water, although they do have a lot of chlorine in them, and I love having a filter that takes out the chlorine. But more than that, a lot of the national parks here or a lot of the wilderness places, they will have rainwater available, but they definitely have signs all over the place that say, don't drink the water directly. You need to treat it or you need to boil it or whatever. And that's because usually a rainwater tank in Australia been sitting around for 20 years without being cleaned out. Best case scenario, there's probably a bunch of leaves and stuff from trees sitting in the bottom of that tank that are now soaking in the water. So the water is gonna be kind of murky and maybe taste a little bit funny. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, there's a few dead birds in that big water tank. And so if you drink that water, you might actually get really sick. So if I'm gonna onboard water when I'm in really remote locations, I think it is worthwhile having a filter. So when it comes to filters, on my Africa Jeep, I actually had a combined unit that was a filter and a UV lamp all in one system. And that was absolutely phenomenal to this day. It is brilliant. If I was going international, I would absolutely use that identical same setup without even a second thought. But the reason I'm not going to this time is because it is really expensive and I think it's overkill. I don't think I need the UV lamp. I don't think I need that amount of capacity. I don't think I need the level of filtration that I had for Africa. The water here in Australia is just better and safer. So what I found at our local hardware store in Australia called Bunnings, I just found what they're calling a caravan filter. Caravans are like RVs in Australia. So this is just an inline filter. It says it's an activated carbon filter designed specifically for what I'm doing with it. Uh, it has a service life of three and a half thousand liters. It lists the pressures and the maximum flow rate and things like that. So it's really nice and compact, which I like about it. It only costs $20, which is great. And because it came from Bunnings here in Australia, I know it's gonna be super easy to replace it when it gets really dirty. So maybe after three months, I'm gonna replace it. I'll have a look how the original one's doing and then decide if I need to replace it that often again. So filtration for me, I feel like if you're gonna to go to the trouble of installing a water tank and a pump, adding a filter doesn't add a lot of complexity, but it makes the water so, so much better to drink. Even if you're just stripping out the chlorine, that's something that I really like. As I said a few times, now that you've got your tank decided, filtration or not filtration, you have to think about how you're going to get water out of the tank. And because this tank sits up on the wheel well, I think I probably could use gravity to get water out of this and it really wouldn't be a problem. I could even just fill it here by pouring it in the top from a jug or a hose or something. So actually, I could just bolt this thing in and use it exactly how it is. I don't even actually need a pump, but based on what I did last time and based on the fact that I wanna have a filter, I think a pump is going to be necessary really to force the water through the filter. And so I got another SureFlow RV water pump. And this is identical to the one that's in my Africa Jeep. It was flawless for that trip. So tried and tested, I'm gonna do it again. This is just a simple 12 volt pump. You just give it 12 volt positive and negative. It will kick on and it has an inbuilt pressure switch. So once the pressure re reaches a certain preset amount, it will turn itself off automatically. So that what that means is if you have a tap on the outlet, when the tap is turned off, even when you turn the pump on, the pump will build pressure for a while, then it will turn off. You could turn the tap on, water will come out and the pump will come on. And so you actually have on-demand water like that. And these things are really well supported in the RV community. So it's easy to buy right angle connectors. It's easy to buy the little pre-filter that you use, all of that kind of stuff. They're great, they work. I like it, that's what I'm gonna use this time. And so the final consideration for this whole system is how am I gonna get water out of and into the tank? And out of is really the easiest one to think about. I've got some food grade hose here. This is just half inch diameter plastic hose, but make sure again that it's food safe because you are gonna be drinking this water. And so I just run a hose from the tank to the pump directly. Then I'll go from the pump through the filter the way these things work, these pumps can push a lot of pressure through a filter, but they don't like to suck through a filter. So you never put the filter on the inlet of the pump, you always put the filter on the outlet of the pump. So it'll go through the filter 
And then basically it could just come out however I want it to. It could just be an open-ended hose and water will just come splashing out. In my Africa JK, I actually installed a tap and so I could turn the tap on and turn the tap off. And that was really great, it worked, but it was kind of just locked to being in one spot. What I've seen other people do is you have a flexible hose with a spray nozzle on the end of it. And if that hose is long enough, maybe a few feet or a meter, you could walk that hose around to fill up a pot on the stove, you could wash out a dirty dish, potentially even wash the sand off my feet after surfing. So I feel like having a spray nozzle is gonna add a little bit of extra uses to my whole setup. And partly I'm doing it just because I wanna be different than I was last time, so I can learn the pros and cons. Is it definitively better? I don't think so. It's gonna be new and different for me, so I'm excited about it. So I'll have a hose dangling somewhere inside my rear canopy and have the spray nozzle hanging up. When I wanna use it, I just unclip it and I can spray water wherever I need. I think that's gonna work really well to get the water out of the tank. When it comes to getting water into the tank, I mean, as I said, I could just pour it in the top with a bucket or if there's a garden hose, I could just use that. That would be the simplest option. But again, I'm thinking about the need to filter water. When I was just out for a few days, you know, the rainwater said, don't drink it directly. So then I'm starting to think, if I just pour it into my tank, now my tank is kind of full of water that I don't want to drink directly. That's okay though, because it'll come out through the filter and it'll be okay but what's gonna happen inside the tank? Especially because this thing is a little bit clear and because it is gonna get a little bit of sunlight on it, I imagine eventually nasties might start growing inside the tank, algae or mold or who knows what it's called, but something that isn't good. And if that started to happen, I think that'd be a real bummer to try and get rid of. I imagine you'd pour a whole bunch of chlorine in there and have to flush it out and blah, blah, blah. I don't wanna deal with any of that. So what I've decided to do again, design it exactly like my last system, where when I want to, when I put the tank in fill mode, it will actually suction water up a hose. Maybe I put that hose in a bucket, maybe you know I somehow put it in a water source. It will suck that water up through the pump, push it through the filter, and then it will go into the tank. And so that'll fill the tank. And then obviously when I'm finished filling it, I'll have to turn a few ball valves. And then when I turn the pump on, water would come out of the tank, through the pump, through the filter, and out my little spray nozzle. So it's actually going to work exactly like it did last time. And last time I used four ball valves to achieve this, to turn on and off the various inlets and outlets. And that was partly because ball valves are easy to get. I figured they'd be easy to replace in Africa if I needed to. And I actually carried a spare, and it was great to just have one spare that was universal for all four of those ball valves. I don't actually know what's available here in Australia, whether I can get a two-way ball valve. I'm about to go down to the hardware store and have a look. And so that's one little design element that I haven't fully figured out yet. And then of course, the final piece of the puzzle is actually to bolt all of this in and make it all fit, route the hoses, figure out the wiring, all of that kind of thing. I did just do a very quick test fit it is gonna fit, but it is gonna be very tight. And ideally I would have put this thing in months and months ago before there was anything else in the bed, before the canopy was even on, because then I'd be able to reach and see and get in there a lot better. But thanks COVID, everything's been annoying and delays, delays, delays on all the shipping. So I'm gonna to have to try and wriggle my way in there and get this thing where I want it and then figure out a system of hoses. Where do I put the pump? How do I secure it all and mount it all? so that it's solid and won't get damaged if things are getting moved in and out of the bed and all that kind of stuff. So that's the task that's in front of me. Now that I've designed it, now that it's all here, once I hit the hardware store, get a few more ball valves, maybe some more drinking water hose, go and try and find an appropriate spray nozzle. The next step, Dad and I are about to dig into actually installing this thing. So if this has been helpful, do hit the thumbs up, do subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments if you've got more questions, more considerations, or something that I haven't thought of that you did or that you would do differently, or if you just wanna learn more about why I'm doing this. I really wanna help you guys design your own system. Because if you go down the Pan American Highway, if you go to Africa, drinking water is a big priority and it is something you need to think about and you need to spend some time designing it and then actually building it. 
So I hope this is helpful. I hope it's the kind of information that's gonna help you get on the road. So thanks very much again for watching. Stay safe out there, and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.